Hi, today we're going to be looking at surface grinding and this is the second of a two-part video series about surface grinding. Now, at the end of part one of this video, we were just getting ready to start cutting. And well, I should say actually grinding. And why do we grind parts? Generally speaking, we grind hardened parts and mainly it's because parts deform during heat treatment. So if I heat treat a part and it deforms, well, it won't be very accurate. So what do I do? As we've done in the projects we've seen up till now, I leave excess material on to compensate for the fact that the part will deform somewhat. I do everything I can to not get it to deform, but it will at least a little bit. And that extra material, well, is what I'm going to use to be able to grind the part, in other words, finish it, to its final, very accurate dimensions. Now, we were just getting ready to start cutting, so let's get to it. Once that I've just barely touched the part, I'll set the graduated collar on my depth axis to zero, and that'll be where I'll start counting. Since I don't know if I've touched the part on its lowest or highest surface, I'm going to complete this first pass without any additional depth of cut. I have at best only about 0.2 millimeters to take off of this first surface and that's not very much. Note, and this is important, that if you want your grinding wheel to survive long enough to make it to the other edge of the part, you want a rapid longitudinal feed and a very slow cross feed. A slow cross feed reduces the width of each pass and that will extend the dressed life of your grinding wheel. It's also important that the dressing wheel exits the surface of the part at each end of a pass. When the cut is complete, we can return to the back of the part without passing over the surface we've just ground. We don't want to produce marks. Yes, you heard correctly, I said two thousandths of an inch maximum. The problem here is that this project is in metric. Now the block measured at the start 25.4 millimeters and we want it to finish at exactly 25. That means that we have 0.4 millimeters overall to take off. That means that on each side we have 0.2 millimeters to remove. 0.2 millimeters in Imperial is 7.8 thousandths of an inch. So almost 8 thousandths of an inch. So for this first surface I suggest three passes of two thousandths of an inch of depth and one final finishing pass of one thousandths of an inch in depth. Once this surface is complete we can move on to our first really really accurate measurement with a 0 0.25 millimeter micrometer. I know I'm being a pain but it's important to remind you to wait for the rotation of the grinding wheel to stop completely before removing the part. So now that we know exactly what's left to be taken off, we can clean everything up and reinstall the part on the magnetic table with our reference surface pointing downwards this time. So we're going to start the second primary surface. Remember, we're already at depth and if we haven't changed the height of the grinding wheel, we can just carry on from there, removing two thousandths of an inch per pass until I reach the required thickness, in this case 25 millimeters. You may want to re-measure once or twice just to make certain that you hit that dimension bang on. Once your cuts are complete, you can turn off the machine, activate the emergency stop button and wait. Wait for the grinding wheel to stop turning. I know I'm being a pain, but it is very important that your fingers never approach a rotating grinding wheel. We can now remove the part from the machine and using a smooth but hard stone deburr the edges that we've just produced. One last verification to make sure that everything's copacetic and everything looks good here so we can move on to our secondary and tertiary reference surfaces. Using a parallel, an angle plate and the two counterboard holes in the surface of my part we're going to fix the part to the angle plate using two M10 by 1.5 socket head cap screws. All that the primary surfaces that I've just ground had to be was parallel to themselves. 
However, our secondary and tertiary reference surfaces are a little more complicated than that. Our secondary surfaces have to be parallel to themselves, but they also have to be square to the primary surfaces. And our tertiary surfaces have to be parallel to themselves, square to the secondary surfaces, and square to the primary surfaces. And that means that we can't just deposit these surfaces on the magnetic table and expect everything to come out square. To get everything square, we're going to have to fix our part to a good square angle plate. And it's the squareness of the angle plate that's going to guarantee that my part will end up square and parallel. It is very important when you install the block on the angle plate that the secondary and tertiary surfaces project beyond the edges of the angle plate. Positioning the part on the angle plate in this way gives us access to the secondary and the tertiary surfaces and we'll be able to grind them without removing them from the angle plate and that will give us a block that is as square as the angle plate is square. After having ground both our primary surfaces, it's safe to say that the grinding wheel probably needs to be dressed again. Remember, one thousandths of an inch per pass. You're going to want to remove about four or five thousandths of an inch, or if you prefer, about two thousandths of an inch more than the deepest cut that you took while grinding your surfaces. There. Now I can disactivate the magnetic table and remove my diamond dresser. Cleanliness is crucial for accurate grinding. So once everything's cleaned up, I can install my angle plate and block assembly so that my secondary reference surface is pointing upwards towards my grinding wheel. And using my vernier caliper, I can measure the height of the block in this secondary plane. I can see here that my block measures 50.8 millimeters, so I have 0.4 millimeters to remove on each side of this block, because what I'm shooting for here is a very accurate 50 millimeters. So I'm going to redo the same series of operations as I did when we started to grind my primary surfaces, with one big difference, and that is once that this first or reference secondary surface is complete, I'm not going to flip the block over to do the other one right away. I'm going to rather move on to my first tertiary surface. So I won't go through all the explanations again, but I will say we have to take small cuts to remove that 0.4 millimeters. And since our machine is imperial, that means about 15 thousandths of an inch. So six or seven passes should do it. Remember, patience is a virtue, and here for safety it's important. So once everything has stopped turning, I can remove my angle plate, clean everything up, and reinstall it so that my tertiary surface is pointing upwards towards my grinding wheel. I can now redo all the steps that I went through to obtain my secondary reference surface, but this time we're going to be doing it for our tertiary surface. The main difference being that we're shooting for 75 millimeters here. Remember, that's 75 millimeters after both surfaces have been ground. So just take half off of this first surface. If we want our holes to be in the proper position, it's very important to remember which surfaces were my reference surfaces. In my case, the two surfaces closest to my identification number are my reference surfaces, and I'll remember that for the rest of the project. A part that is higher than it is wide will not hold properly on a magnetic chuck and needs to be supported. You have to use very accurately squared blocks for this, and if possible, blocks that are just a little shorter than the height of the surface that you want to grind. All I want to do here is clean up the second secondary surface, get it nice and flat and parallel, so that I can perform an accurate measurement and determine exactly how much material needs to be taken off to get that very accurate 50 millimeter dimension. Remember, you don't want to flip flop your block. Your reference surface is always going to be the one against the magnet from here on in. All the material that you need to remove from these secondary surfaces will be removed from your second secondary surface, 
or if you prefer, the one that we've just cleaned up. It's important to mention that there are several reasons for deburring your parts when you're machining. But as far as grinding goes, it's particularly important because any burr left on the edge of a part could really throw off your setup. After all, we're talking here about thousandths of an inch, as this is supposed to be accurate machining. So many will say, why a burr? I mean, this is hardened steel. It shouldn't be kicking up a burr because a burr is the reflection of the ductility of the material that you're machining. Usually it's found at the end of a cut as the tool exits the surface. Crispy materials, well, shouldn't do that, right? Well, they do because in this case, where we're cutting, the cutting zone heats up, not the part, the material that we're removing heats up. That makes it soft, ductile, and that means that as the grinding wheel exits the surface being cut, it will leave a burr along the edge of the part. My secondary surfaces are complete. I can now identify my tertiary reference surface and position it against the magnetic table. This part is definitely going to require some support. Again, all I want to do here is clean up the second tertiary surface. All I need is a nice flat surface that I can measure from accurately to determine how much material needs to be removed to obtain that accurate 75 millimeter dimension. Everything's nice and flat and square, so we can now use our micrometer to perform an accurate measurement and determine exactly how much we need to remove. We can then remove that material gradually, remember two thousandths of an inch maximum per pass, until we get that accurate 75 millimeters. Okay, the machining on this block is complete, but don't forget the deburring. We want to deburr the part because after all, we want it to be safe and we want it to look good. So deburr each time you cut and move the part. And there you go. Three pairs of accurate parallel and square surfaces. So, surface grinding. An excellent way of finishing a part very accurately and even whenever possible hardened part we, we don't grind soft materials and i've said this in the pedestal grinder video but i'm going to come back on it for safety reasons if i try to grind aluminum example that has a very low melting point well the heat produced by the grinding operation in this case for aluminum is going to melt the aluminum it's not going to produce a chip and it's going to encrust into the wheel and it's going to be a disaster not just a poor finish this is very very dangerous so you can grind certain aluminum alloys but you really really have to know what you're doing so avoid that now so they're mostly hardened there's another reason why you don't want to grind soft materials let's say a free machining steel it is steel but it's very soft uh, so because as the grains are ejected from the grinding wheel well they will have a tendency to encrust themselves into the surface of that soft part so that means that really when you're grinding you want to do it on hardened materials for surface and cylindrical grinding in other words the accurate grinding processes now this is also dangerous because things go or happen very quickly. I mean, it's, it's a, a fraction of a second and it's almost instantaneous. You go from very fine to bang disaster just like that. So be very, very careful when you're grinding. Check everything and for God's sake, don't put your hands close to a rotating grinding wheel. 
Take the time and wait for it to stop turning before you do anything on the machine. Also, it's not a bad idea, especially when you're starting out, to wear a face shield when you're working on the grinder. Because, well, things happen quickly and things go flying in every direction. It could be quite dangerous. And the last thing I want to mention for people setting up shops, now in school you may have noticed that all the grinders are at odd angles one to the other in the room that I was in. And that's not because we want it to be aesthetic. It's because if an accident does happen, things are going to be going mostly in the direction of rotation of the grinding wheel. If all the machines are placed at an angle where that direction does not aim for the next person over who's using a machine, well, that's just good practice. So positioning the machines can be important also. So this concludes our video on surface grinding. It's really just an introduction. But I think we have a good package here. And we have several videos, or three videos I should say, on projects where I use surface grinding. So it would be a good idea to go and see them. We're talking about the 1-2-3 block project. We're talking about the V block project and the TAP block project. You can find them all on my website, thatlazymachinist.com. And while we have other videos about other types of grinding operations, we have a video on bench grinders, we have a video on grinding wheels, we have a video on installing and balancing grinding wheels, and, well, we have a series of three videos on cylindrical grinding. So, until we meet again, have fun, be safe, and happy machining. Thank you.